One of the ways to monitor performance of your TFS app tier and, and potentially your database as well is to use the built-in performance counters. Now, when Microsoft ships TFS, they include a bunch of performance counters that you can use. So in this demonstration, let's take a look at what some of those performance counters are. And to start with, let's just fire up Perfmon. Just push start and then type Perfmon, and that gives you the performance monitor. If you open it up, we can take a look at the existing performance monitor. By default, it's just the processor utilization time. But we can add our own, basically, performance counters here. Let's go in, and we might have a user-defined one. And I created one here called TFS data that's just blank for right now. Um, you can right-click here and add a new one if you like. I created one called TFS data that comes with some default ones. Nothing really out of the box and nothing TFS-related yet. I just said, give me the default counters. And from here, we can then go in and add some performance data collectors. So I'm going to say this is my TFS app tier, potentially, and I'm going to gather performance counter data. You can also gather event data, configuration data, etc. Let's go next. And here's where I'm going to add my performance counters. When you click add performance counters, you're given a selection of all of the performance counters on this machine. Now you'll see everything from the .NET CLR, because it's a .NET application, all the way down to a bunch of you know IPsec drivers and all sorts of things. What we care about is the TFS ones, and they're all prefixed with TFS. Makes it easy to find, because there are literally hundreds upon hundreds of, of categories of these. So let's take a look at some TFS ones. There's a chat service that's available. There's a code sense service that runs all of our code sense for Visual Studio Ultimate. There's a file container service, a lab management service, a proxy service, which I think is an important one probably to pay attention if you have proxy services installed. You can look at things like what is the current cache size? How many file downloads do we have? What is the total cache hits? So basically that's going to be the number of, of hits when we go and ask for a file, how many are we actually getting back? So we could take total cache hits, for instance, if we like that one, and we could add it, TFS proxy total cache hits, and then maybe the total download requests, etc. And we could do the current cache size if we like. We could add all of those as proxy services. Let's scroll down. We've got more. We've got a few other things. TF services, or TFS services. These are things like the average response time for services. This is average response time for all services. Azure storage, downloaded bytes per second, uh, caching service hits. There's all sorts of different things that you can go in here and explore. Now, we're not going to have necessarily a lot that we're going to want to grab from here. You kind of have a specific need when you start to measure it, but this is where you can find those. If you're doing Git work, you can find specifically Git performance counters here. How many fetches per section, commit jobs per second, etc. A lot of different types of things. And we can take a look at SQL stats. This is often important. We can take a look at the number of SQL executions per second. Async calls. Version control is another one. It's, it's the TF version control, but it's basically corresponds like the Git version control above that's supported. A work item tracking information. There can be some useful ones in here. Like, for instance, how many active Git work item requests are we having right now? We can add that in and we can see that changing over time. And how many metadata requests are we getting? And we can, so we could add those two requests for an example. We could say we want the sample interval to be every five seconds for demonstration purposes and finish. We can open it up and we can then start logging these things. They're being logged out to a file and we can get some performance counter data basically based off of these performance counters. Let's go ahead and make sure we start that data collector. And we can do some things like seeing the latest reports, um, create a new window from here, etc. export our list, view the properties, and all of the other things that you can do from your performance monitor. All right, after the performance monitor returns, we can see some summary things and look at our basic configurations that we have for our report data that we've gathered. 
In this demonstration, we've walked through some performance counters, how to set them up, how to start gathering data and storing that to a log file, and it can be useful. I do want to take a step back, however, and talk about performance counters. I've managed a lot of TFS servers, and I've only had to go to performance counters probably twice, maybe three times in my entire career. Not something that I use on a very regular basis. However, those performance counters are available, and they're there. Another tool that you can use, and it changes with each, each release as well, very often the location, but there's a database that stores transactional data about the performance as well. And you can see a little bit of that data when you look at the URL, which is the URL of your server, colon 8080, WAC, TFS, WAC, underscore OI. And we're going to be demonstrating that when we look at logs. But that's another place where we can see some types of performance data, as well as looking with other issues with your TFS server.